Ox and Hare presents, in association with True Story FM, the Swashbuckling Ladies Debate Society. Today's episode, The Hounds of Herr Haig. Do not let your guard down. I will not let my guard down. Ouch! What happened? <sighs> I let my guard down. It is important not to think of the sword as a weapon. It is not a fork or a spoon. You must begin to think of it as an extension of your body. A deadly extension? Yes, exactly. A tool is a clumsy thing. It is a a spade, a a trowel, a, a shovel. I'm pretty sure those are all the same thing, just in different sizes. Yes, yes. Mock my language. If you'll recall, the bargain was you teach me about swords, I teach you about words. Fine, fine, but no lessons at the same time. We oui? <coughs> out. Relax, dearest. We have a visitor. Welcome. What's your name, child? I'm Jane. And I'm not a child. I'm almost 13. Excuse-moi. We appear to have a mature woman of the world come to visit us today. Don't tease. Jane, my name is Saffron, and that's Zinnia. Welcome to the Swashbuckling Ladies Debate Society. What can we do for you? I just... I'm not sure if... We're here to help. My aunt. She told me I should come, but I can see it was a mistake. I'll go. Wait, please. Zinnia, would you be so kind as to brew a pot of tea for us? And perhaps some of the cookies I made yesterday? Did you say... cookies? (laughs) cookies? <laughs> it appears our aged friend still enjoys the sweets of her youth. Zinnia. I shall return in two shakes no more. Now, while we're waiting, why not tell me why you're here? It's beneath you. It's such a small problem. Is it bothering you? Yes, of course. Keeping you up nights, causing your stomach to clench and churn? It is. Then it hardly sounds like a small problem. It's my dog. He was taken. Someone stole your dog? Yes. And no one believes me. He didn't run away. I know it. Uh, Tell me what happened. What's his name? Indigo. It was three nights ago. He's an inside dog. He won't even go past the doorway unless someone's holding his leash. I came home and he was gone. The window in my room was open. Jane. He didn't run away. He wouldn't have. I hate that window. It opens up at street level. All you can see are feet, and when it rains, it pulls up against the glass. Besides... Besides what? Last summer, they painted over the sill. I haven't opened it since then. I found broken paint shards all over the ground. Someone broke into your house to take your dog? You heard? Sharp ears. We are on the case. We are? We are. I can't. I don't have much money. If we return your dog to you, will you love him? Yes. Take care of him? Empower him? Give him the best life a dog can dream of? Yes, I I will. Then, that is our payment. Write down your address and Indigo's favorite places to sniff and explore. And then? Then, the hunt begins. What is your grand plan for finding one small dog in the middle of a city as big as Massalia? I have no idea. But you took the job. Yes. Did you not see the crying girl on the chaise? Of course. It's just... Are we really the right people for this? We are the ones who are doing it. I've hunted men. Dogs have the same instincts. Just two more legs. (laughs) I don't think that's how it works. And when have you been so soft-hearted? 
It's not just this dog, it was the others. Haven't you noticed? At night, no barking, no howling. I had. I just didn't want to jinx it. I was enjoying the quiet. Yes, well, your quiet might be the misfortune of others. Look, here, on the wall. Missing animal posters. No, missing dog posters. Not a fleeing feline to be found. So we aren't hunting a dog, we're hunting a rogue dog catcher. Exactement. Hang on, I, I believe I have an idea. Oh, good, I was running out of my own. <laughs> Let me get my map. You've lived here for over a year and you still carry a map. Duration does not equal mastery. And you love maps. And I love maps. Now can we focus? Indigo was taken from here. If I mark the addresses from the wanted posters, we can see... A circle. Right. The dogs have to be taken and held somewhere. My guess is that it's somewhere in the middle. Let me look. Ah, I have it. Here. The Meadowbrook Estate? Why? The Meadowbrooks were uh, bankrupted by our new administration and forced to leave the country. That leaves a large building empty and secluded and in the center of your circle. It's as good a lead as any. Let's go. Thank goodness for the moon or I wouldn't be able to see a thing. Careful, all these topiaries have grown wild. It uh, makes it difficult to know if we are truly alone. Why? What did you have in mind? <laughs> Not for now, sweet saffron. There, in the greenhouse, look. A light moving. This estate is not as deserted as it appears. Let's go. Oh, and masks on. But of course. Pipe down, you mutts. You're going to make me lose count. 18, 19, 20, oh, just 16 more of these doggies and I have enough to pay back Mr. Ganua. Of course, I could use the cash to skip town. Make my way down the coast. Not a good idea. Yeah, you're probably right. His goons will... Hey, wait a second. Hello, Mickey. Oh, no. No, yes. Ooh, my hand! Try to reach for that weapon again, and you'll get more than a scratch. You know this gentleman? Meet Mickey the Sprocket. He's a jack of few trades, does low end criminal work for the syndicate. Things they don't wish to waste their paid employees on. Strictly small time. Hey! I mean, you're not wrong, but still. What's the job, Mickey? Do you plan to start your own dog track? Hey, that's not a bad idea. But think of the cleanup. Nah, this gig's better. I'm getting paid by the pooch. Someone's paying you to steal dogs. Yep. Why? I didn't ask. Why didn't you just take strays? I did that, but them dogs are smart and quick. So you started stealing dogs from houses. Most of them came right up to me. Small sniff of bacon and whoosh, into the bag. Ah, my nose! Those are people's prized pets, you monster. Calm down, we want the organ grinder, not the monkey. Yeah, that's right. Stay back, you psycho. I ain't telling you squat. Ah, uh, why'd you hit me? No one calls her the psycho. Now, who is your benefactor? I don't know. Mickey. Ah, don't hit me. I mean, I, I don't know his name. He didn't tell me, and he wore a mask when I met him. He was a kraut, though. A uh, kraut? He means Germanic. How did you deliver the dogs to him? I didn't. The, the mook picked this spot. I, I drugged the dogs, I left them on the roof, and when I came back the next time, they was gone. <sighs> I really want to hit him again. I can't blame you for this. The estate sits above the city on this ridge. 
Why bring the dogs up here? Don't know. But I'm supposed to be gone by now. Them's my instructions. As of this moment, you are no longer in the pet napping business. Do you understand? I find so much as a stray hair on your lapel. I start cutting and don't stop until my arm gets tired. Is this clear? Okay, I consider me retired. I'm allergic anyway. Mickey, run. What? Oh, yeah, I'm gone. <sighs> At least we saved this pack of pups. But why bring them up here in the first place? Zinnia, uh, is it getting darker? And not just here. Uh, I might have something to do with that. Oh, mon dieu! Yes! Rest well, citizens of Massalia, for tomorrow! You shall wake up in a brave new world. In the ashes of yesterday, you will emerge to create a future for yourselves. <laughs> nice words. Very poetic. But it's uh, that part about the in the ashes uh, that concerns me. Mademoiselle Liberty. It's pronounced Liberté and it's uh, Madame. How did you find me? That was all her. Clouds in the sky aren't suspicious, but dark ones by themselves moving against the wind, they tend to be a bit more standoutish. Ah, uh, thank you, Madame Egalité. And uh, since you know us. Oh, how rude of me! I am Herr Haig. Of course you are. But I have to ask, Herr Haig, what's with the dogs? The dogs? Yes, I'm assuming you'll call them your hounds of hell or something equally ridiculous. But why kidnap all those poor pooches? For just such an occasion. <whistles> Behold, my hangdog horde. <laughs> You've transformed them into half-human hybrids? How horrid. But this is so needlessly complicated. Why not just hire a battalion of goons, men to serve your whims? Humans are corrupt, denying their animal nature. You could treat someone with kindness for years, then one day they'll turn on you and destroy you with the kind of hurt only someone who knows you can bestow. <laughs> Had a bad breakup, huh? Well, I've been there. With whom? But with a dog, you always know where you stand. Their love is unconditional. As is their hate. As is their smell. It is a scent I have grown to love. Oh, really? Nine. But I've learned to tolerate it. This batch still hates baths. Go figure. Herr Haig, why are we here? In the air, above our beloved city? An airship like this in the middle of the night. Haven't you guessed? Ugh, he's going to bomb them. Precisely. Why? Because things have gone too far. It is the only way. We wiped this slate clean and the people can start again. With you as their new emperor. Me? Never. I'm unworthy of such an honor. But I trust the people will choose someone worthy. You trust the people, the same ones you're about to rain explosives upon. Yes, well, I trust the survivors. I've heard enough. Choose your weapon, Herr Heg. I challenge you to single combat. Let's see. You, Madame Liberté, world-renowned swordsman and duelist versus me, Herr Heg, acclaimed scientist and engineer. The calculations do not work in my favor. No, I'm afraid I shall decline and instead send my mob of mutated mutts to malevolently masticate you. <laughs> Have you no one else, sir? Hmm, I'm about to drop bombs on a sleeping city, so... No. Hounds, attack! 
Madame Egalité, he's all yours. Understood. And you? You're pretty, as much as I can tell, behind that Colombina. You know your masks. But you are so tiny. I have no wish to hurt you. And I have no wish to be hurt. That being said, I did not come empty-handed. Ah, much better having that off my back. Shall I pour? Indeed. Do you always carry a foldable bistro booth with you? Not always. One lump or two. Two, please. How's it going over there? Just fine. <laughs> These arms haven't learned to work together yet, but oh, man, they do but Damn, boy! So, everything all right then? Time of my life, bad dog! Someone's getting their nose sweated! <laughs> Herr Haig, a man of your education to rain such wanton destruction upon the innocent. These are desperate times. Desperate measures must be taken. Clever sayings, when often taught, are used as replacements for real thought. What? My father taught me that. Of course, it's in and of itself a clever saying, so... It is not the people I wish to hurt, but those in power. The rich, the corrupt, the ignorant leaders who have so shamelessly taken control of the country and refused to listen to anyone. I, too, share your frustration. We're fighting them, too. Or oh, taking time out to teach a pack of augmented canines to heal. Heal, I said! It is not enough. This way, the boil is lanced, and the healing may begin. But first, a jolt of pain. Did you hear me? I said a jolt of pain. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, uh, my apologies. I was thinking of something else. You, you are on top of my dirigible of doom, surrounded by my hangdong horde. What could you possibly be thinking of? The statues... Likely a fountain, too. <laughs> You've got him now. Let go of my ankle. Here, go fetch. What statues? The ones they'll build of the fallen heroes of tonight. Not the ordinary citizens, of course. The rich, the famous, the ones with their names on the buildings. How these brave men and women were proudly serving the greater good when their lives were snuffed out. The monuments they'll erect to them especially to him, will be quite elaborate, I expect. Expensive, too! And that. Wonder where they'll get the money for that. Oh, they'll find a way. They always do. Then the plaques will go up for where they were born, where they went to school, and where they died. Not to mention the complete works. Precisely. They'll gather all the writings, put them in a nice hardcover book, probably some gold leaf, just think of the future generations who will pull those books off the shelf and wonder why they made such a fuss. And those same terrible seeds will be planted in new soil. Old ideas moving into new brains delivered by dead trees. A wonder of the ages. I don't want that. Uh, excuse me? I don't want that. I want this to end, to cure the disease and not send it into submission. Then, Herr Haig, you've chosen the wrong tool for the job. Your method seals their corruption into history. Their blood will write the narrative. Then what? How do you suggest we save the world? Save the world? That's much too big a job, even for the two of us. But my house, that I can save, and maybe my street, or, or maybe just a single dog. But not alone. You? But what has happened to my hounds? They are fine, hurt, but alive. Using a sword to not kill, that requires special skills, ones which I have in abundance. I want to make the world a better place. This is a feeling we share. But the imprecise application of explosives, what good has that ever done for anyone? It's just more destruction, less joy, more rubble, less hope. This is the end of the line, Herr Hag. Your army is defeated. You could push that button. Even knowing it would be the last thing you do. 
You might even be faster than Liberté's blade, but then that's it. You leave the world a scarier, more dangerous place. Let me try it this way. You are a man of science. I am. You say this is a boil. Counterpoint. I say we've been stung. And the stinger is still embedded, pumping poison into the body. A sword could remove it. But is it the right tool for the job? Some problems can only be solved at the point of a sword. And some with words. Which one are you? Ah, very well. I surrender. To who? To whom? Oh, not this again. Proper grammar benefits everyone. I don't understand. We are not the police. Nor are we jailers. And we don't expect you to get a fair trial from those you were trying to kill. Then what? Run and hide. I expect you have a rocket sled or something similar hidden nearby. Disappear and devote your time to building, not destroying. But one thing. Yes? Should you return, as tried some other uh, smoke-spewing contraption, it will not be the kind words of egalité you face, but my steel. Is this clear? Very. Good. And see about turning those things back into dogs. We have enough howling brutes in our species without adding more. Yes, of course. Without the treatment, they should revert to their natural states within a day or two. Lucky for them. And for you. Quite. I shall never forget your mercy, Madame Liberté and Madame Egalité. Well done. (sighs) I didn't think that would work. By the time they get to building a death machine, most of them are too far gone. Boys and their toys. Once they build the singers, I just want to use it. I have a question. I promise I didn't kill any of the animals. <sighs> Second question, then. The bad breakup? It wasn't you. Of course not. We've never broken up. Saffron, you have nothing to worry about. It is you I married, and to who I will stay married. To whom? I declare my love, and you correct my grammar. Was it a declaration of love? It sounded more like you trying to dodge out of an uncomfortable topic of conversation. My reflexes are quite heightened. It is pure instinct at this point. Very funny. So, shall we take this flying monstrosity up the coast of the Mediterranean, conquer a private beach... Hmm, tempting. But it's a bit too gaudy for me. Hmm? How about we ditch it in the sea, then uh, head back into town for Canale? Pastries have always been the way to my heart. A route I know very well. Episode 1, The Hounds of Hare Haig, was written, directed, and edited by Kyle Olson. Our producer and sound designer is Ryan Fitzpatrick. Hey, that's me. Starring Amy Shaw as Zinnia, Anastasia Plum as Saffron, Vicky Hall as Jane, Jacob Stovall as Mickey, and Justin Kent as Hare Haig. Our theme song is written and performed by Headley Knights, and our interstitial music is Intended Force by Kevin McLeod. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at Ox and Hare so you won't miss the next thrilling adventure. The Swashbuckling Ladies Debate Society is an Ox and Hare media production. Old format, new ideas.